Hey there, welcome back to the Happy Homestead. I'm Amanda, and today we're kicking back off with our three homestead meals. These are three dinners that we make throughout the week that I'm literally making for my family and just bringing you along. So today's Tuesday, so it's Taco Tuesday, but we're not having tacos. <laughs> Sometimes I just get really bored of Taco Tuesday. So we are doing Tikka Tuesday. We're gonna do a Tikka Masala, a vegetable Tikka Masala. So I have behind me here, um, I'll show, I'll give you a close up, but I've got some chopped carrots, onion, garlic, ginger, and then I have some cauliflower, some green beans, and some cooked chickpeas. I already cooked the chickpeas earlier today in the Instant Pot and then drained them. They're in that green colander there. And so we're gonna make this gorgeous, beautiful depth of flavor tikka masala sauce and then add our vegetables and chickpeas in. And we're gonna serve that over some quinoa. And I have some flatbreads in the refrigerator that I made a few days ago. It's not technically non-bread, it's like a sourdough flatbread, so we'll just use that. So the first thing we need to do is get our tikka sauce going. Add a little olive oil. And we're gonna do the garlic, the ginger, the onion, and the carrot. Now it's about two carrots, half of a large onion, probably about two inches worth of ginger and three cloves of garlic. And so the ginger and the garlic are minced and then the carrot and the onion are just chopped. So while we're softening these vegetables up, I wanted to tell you um, the key to a really good tikka is garam masala. Now this is one that I got from Mountain Rose Herbs. It's a certified organic blend, but I wanna save you. Don't stress, don't fret. If you don't have garam masala in your pantry or your spice cabinet, that's okay. You can easily go look up online what's in it and you most likely have all the ingredients. And I only have, if you can see, I have very little in here and so I don't even have enough. So I'm going to then piecemeal what I do need from the rest of the raw ingredients. And so here's what it is. It is cumin seed powder, coriander seed powder, cardamom powder, black pepper, cinnamon, clove powder, nutmeg powder. That's garam masala. So I've got my cinnamon and my clove. I've got some nutmeg that I can freshly grind up. I've got cumin. I've got coriander. The only thing I don't have is cardamom powder. Now I have cardamom pods, but I don't feel like going to that extreme right now. Oh, and I have salt and pepper. And granted, there's no salt in this mix, so just be aware that if you buy a mix, check to see if there's salt already in it. And I just, like 30 minutes ago, picked up these beautiful garlic scapes. This is from a local apiary where we get a lot of our bees from and they had a ton of them and so they were giving them away for free. I got a nice little bunch and I'm probably going to make some garlic scape pesto and I'm going to freeze some but I think I may actually take one right now, chop it up and throw it in. Okay, so it's when your vegetables are starting to saute and maybe brown a little bit that you're gonna add your spices. So I'm gonna add the rest of my garam masala mix. It's about a half a teaspoon. And as, if you've followed along or seen me cook at all, you know that I kind of wing it. So now I'm just gonna wing it with piecemealing the rest of my ingredients. I just did clove, cinnamon, cumin, coriander, pepper and I'm going to add some Redmond real salt oh it smells so good already some 
freshly grated nutmeg. And so this sauce that I'm making, you can use this sauce for any kind of animal protein dish. It does not have to be a vegetarian dish. I have a 32 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. So once your vegetables are softened up and you got your spices in there, you're gonna add your tomato sauce. And I have a quart of home canned tomato sauce from homegrown tomatoes. going to bring this up to pressure for about eight minutes high pressure for eight minutes I'm not putting anything else in so remember my chickpeas are already cooked and then I have cauliflower and green beans that were frozen so I will throw these in after the sauce is done right now we're just putting this sauce together and getting all the flavors together So while our sauce is coming together, I'm gonna to get my quinoa cooked. I'm putting this on a medium high heat and I'm actually gonna be using a beef stock that I just recently canned just to infuse some more nutrition and um, collagen and, and nutrients into our quinoa. So I'm using one pint, which is about two cups. And I'm gonna use one cup quinoa. and one and so we're just gonna let this come to a boil and then we'll put the lid on and put it on low heat so it's boiling I'm gonna turn the heat to low put the lid on so our eight minutes is up it has not released on the valve yet but I've let it sit for about 10 minutes. So now I'm going to manually release. There we go. <laughs> you have two options. You can leave it as is, right, with the chunks, or you can get an immersion blender out and blend it up to a really nice, smooth sauce. Just be very careful not to let it splatter on you because it's really hot. Okay, now that we have this velvety smooth sauce. So before I continue, I wanted to tell you, you could actually make this sauce up until this point like we just did and freeze it. And that way you always have a tikka sauce ready to go. So I am going to be using raw cream from raw milk that we purchased at a farm. Uh, so you're gonna see me dip the cream into this. If you didn't have cream, you could also use a yogurt. That makes a really great creamy sauce too. And I am just kind of winging it with how much I want. Probably gonna try to use all this cream in here. So if you're gonna freeze it, I would freeze it, like I said, prior to putting your dairy in. I wouldn't put the dairy in with it. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna add a little more. All right, and we're gonna add our chickpeas in. Our 
our vegetables. Now again, these were just frozen vegetables that I've had kind of thawing here that aren't even totally thawed. Um, but you could roast your vegetables first and add a little more depth of flavor. This is just a really quick dinner because it is quarter of six at night and I need to feed my family. If you had some fresh cilantro, you could sprinkle some fresh cilantro on as well. There's dinner, Tika Tuesday. I think that should be a thing. <laughs> bon appetit, see you next time. It is the next day. I wanted to tell you that the Tika was delicious. So we ate it for dinner, but what's so funny is my children ate all of the chickpeas and the vegetables within the, the sauce, right, the Tika sauce. They didn't like any of the quinoa, they just didn't want to eat it and then all they wanted was a salad. <laughs> so Sometimes you win some, sometimes you don't. So the rest of the tikka is in the freezer right now. And I'm just gonna get started really quick on one component for dinner tonight. As you remember yesterday, I had all of these garlic scapes, these beautiful garlic scapes. Um, and I have since learned these are scapes from elephant garlic. So they're a little bit more mild than probably any other kind of hard neck variety. Um, so I'm gonna be using probably all of these today and I'm going to be making a garlic scape pesto. This process this is going to be so fast um, because we're gonna have salmon tonight and I'm gonna bake it with some of the pesto on top and then we're gonna have some, I'm thinking scallop potatoes if I have a chance to put them together. That just sounds really good and comforting to me today. Uh, it's been crazy, crazy few days. I'm sure you all can relate, right? Life is crazy at times and so sometimes I just need to slow down and have something that kind of comforts and eases us a little bit in whatever way that is. And uh, I show love to my family often through food and by making them homemade things. So I wanna make some homemade scallop potatoes with our garlic scape pesto salmon. So I have a jar here, it's like an old pickle jar, and uh, I'm gonna try to fill it, most of it, with our pesto. I plan on making a lot and then using whatever I need tonight and then either keeping some in the fridge or freezing the rest. So I'm gonna put everything in a food processor. This is gonna be so easy and I want you to try it at home. So if you're unfamiliar with garlic scapes in general, they come from growing hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic doesn't always put the scape up. Um, and it's basically this long stalk that grows up and it has a flower at the end. And uh, here's one that's kind of partially opening up. It almost looks a little bit like an onion flower. Um, and so it opens up to this gorgeous flower and uh, once you do that though, once you allow that flower to open up, your garlic is not as good. So when you're growing garlic, you always cut the scapes off because you don't want the plant sending all its energy up here. You want its energy down in the bulb. <laughs> so that's why you harvest the garlic scapes. So I'm just gonna be cutting that flower off and that'll go into our compost bin. But if you ever have some scapes that you harvest and you let the flower bloom or put them in a vase of water, kind of like what I have here, the flower might still bloom. And they are so beautiful. They're just gorgeous in any kind of flower arrangement as well as just pretty to look at in general. So I'm uh, going to chop off some of the rush, rough ends of my garlic scapes too. And I'm going to just kind of roughly chop these and put them in the food processor. Again, this comes off of hard neck garlic and it only comes in the spring, like late spring, early summer, from those people who are actually growing hard neck garlic. So if you don't grow hard neck garlic and you wanna get some scapes, find someone who does. And if you're familiar with making pesto at all, right, it's usually just five ingredients, which is basil, pine nuts, Parmesan cheese, garlic, olive oil, uh, salt and pepper, maybe a little lemon juice. Okay, maybe a little more than five ingredients, but um, it's usually a variation of any of those ingredients. And then you can sub different nuts out. If you don't have pine nuts, you can use walnuts, pistachios. Well, instead of the traditional pesto that we're making today, right? So we're not using any basil. The garlic scapes are the green 
of our pesto. So there's no basil today, and I'm not using any traditional regular garlic bulbs. The scapes are going to give that garlic flavor. So I'm just doing, I'm actually gonna leave this one because it's got this like skin here and this is the one with the flower bulb. So that's going back in the water and I'm just gonna let that bloom and be pretty. Um, but this is just gonna have the scape, some lemon juice, salt and pepper, olive oil, parm cheese and some toasted pine nuts. I have about a cup of toasted pine nuts. Some are a little more toasted than others. But whatever nut you use, toasting them makes the flavor just oh so much better. So if you're gonna use walnuts or pistachios, make sure you toast them just until they're brown. I'm gonna put about maybe a half a cup of Parmesan cheese in. Now I'm really winging it with my, maybe about a tablespoon and a half of salt with my ingredients here. As you know, I very rarely measure. I'm gonna do the juice of one lemon. It just helps to brighten the flavor up. It really brings it out. And then I'm gonna drizzle in olive oil as we're mixing until I get a good consistency that I like. And then we'll taste it and see what it needs. added probably about a half a cup of oil. I don't like my pesto really oily. Well, this is so beautiful, but I can see that some of the garlic scapes are still pretty chunky. So I'm gonna go at this again, but not before tasting it. Woo, you don't, you don't feel the garlic until towards the end of the bite. Oh my goodness, that is so good. I was not looking forward to eating dinner tonight, except for maybe the potatoes, but now I'm really looking forward to the pesto salmon. That is really good. All right, we're gonna blend this up just a little bit more. All right, I added a tad more salt, pepper, and olive oil, and I think we're good. So I'm gonna put this in my jar. So good. And this is one of those things that you can't really buy in the store. Now, mind you, you if you have like a small farm store somewhere or specialty store, like a Dean and DeLuca kind of quality, you might be able to find like a garlic scape pesto. But in everyday grocery stores, you will not. So this is one of those things that is just, oh, so delicious. It's much more unique and it is worth the effort to do. All right, so the pesto's in the fridge. I'm gonna get started on the scalloped potatoes because if I don't do it now, it's not gonna happen. Um, so I've got some organic yellow potatoes here. These are, yeah, just organic yellow potatoes. I got these from Azure Standard from I think last month's order. We've just been storing them in the refrigerator because our makeshift root cellar in the garage in a five gallon bucket, it's much too warm now to do that. So now we store them in our extra fridge. So I have a mandolin slicer here that I have set on one eighth of an inch. I'm going to slice the potatoes one eighth of an inch thick, just enough to cover, uh, to do an eight by eight pan. I'm not doing a nine by 11 casserole dish. That's just too much for us for right now. So we're gonna do an eight by eight and we're gonna be doing multiple levels of the potatoes, right? So I'm just gonna be eyeing it to make sure I've got what I need. Once we have enough potatoes cut, then we're gonna to go to the stove and make the roux, the cream sauce roux to make with the potatoes. 
It's pretty simple. If you haven't used a mandolin before or you don't have one, you're welcome to use a sharp knife. That works just as well. You just wanna get your potatoes pretty thin. If you plan on using a mandolin, go with caution and make sure you're being careful. Okay, all the potatoes are done. I only did five potatoes, but you can see it's quite a lot and I'm thinking it's enough for my pan. Uh, if I need to do one more, I will, but I think five is a good amount. So when you slice them nice and thin, like one eighth inch thick, they cook really fast in this cream sauce, right? And uh, they're just delicious. So now we need to go make our roux. And all that means is I'm going to chop up, I have half of an onion that I took out of the fridge that was left from, I think last night. So I've got half an onion here. I have a couple of tablespoons of butter in my saucepan. I'm just gonna slice this and I'm gonna saute this in the butter. And then we're gonna slowly add some flour and then slowly add two cups of milk uh, whisking the entire time. We'll do salt, pepper, I'm gonna do a little bit garlic powder, uh, maybe a little dehydrated onion as well, and make a really thick sauce. And then we're gonna layer our potatoes and our sauce. This is just a little garlic powder because I didn't put any fresh garlic in. So as you can see, I added about two eighths. What is that? One fourth cup of flour. And then I'm slowly adding my milk. And you can see it's already so thick and gorgeous. So you could use a heavy cream or a half and half if you'd like. But honestly, if you're doing it in a roux way, like I'm showing you, you don't even need to have that extra, extra expense or um, fat or calories if you're trying to help avoid that. By doing a roux, you get this gorgeous creamy flavor with just using milk. And by the way, my milk is uh, skim milk because I already skimmed my cream. It's a cream top or cream line milk and I already skimmed my cream off days ago. So this is even a skim milk. You could even cut your milk with like half milk, half chicken stock if you wanted to do that. All right, so I think our sauce is done and I just did two layers of the potatoes to start. I'm gonna start putting some sauce on and then remaining layers of potatoes. I put some oregano in as well. So that's the, the specks that you see in my sauce. And I'm only gonna put some cheese on top you could easily throw some cheese out throughout these layers. I'm just gonna throw some on top. All right, so this is a mixture of cheddar and Montasio. And Montasio is like an Italian cheese. It's very similar to Parmesan. It's one that I made last fall. 
and it's so good. So I'm just kind of using what I have in the fridge between the cheddar and the Montasio. I just grated it. And now I'm gonna sprinkle it over the top. And this is gonna go in the oven for probably about 45 minutes. Um, I'll just check to see once it's bubbling. But I'm gonna say 45 minutes for about 375. I'm just kind of winging it here, but again, when it's nice and brown and bubbly. I don't wanna to go too high on the temperature because I don't want it to burn on the top, right? Um, you just want it to be a beautiful brown. So I'm thinking 375 is a good number. So this will go in the oven. Bon Appetit! Welcome back. It's the third night in our comfort meal homestead dinner episode. And I just wanted to, again, update you like I did yesterday. Our dinner last night, the pesto, salmon, scallop potatoes, and broccoli, it was so good. Like, I don't know if it was the Prosecco I was drinking while I was eating it, or the fact I was like totally hungry, or it really just was delicious, but it was so good. I found myself like dipping my fork more into some of the pesto in the refrigerator just to have a little bit on each bite, even with the broccoli. It was so good. So highly suggest you try that. And if you don't have garlic scapes, just make regular pesto and do it. That works too. So tonight we are going to be making, it's called steak tips. Now, honestly, I don't really know what a steak tip is. <laughs> just going to be taking some cuts of beef that we have and cutting them into larger or smaller pieces, but larger than a bite-sized piece, right? But it's like steak tips with a mushroom gravy. We have some leftover scallop potatoes. We have a little leftover broccoli, so we're going to have that. And then I have some beautiful salad greens here from the garden that I just picked, as well as some snow peas that we are going to make a salad with, like with the balsamic vinaigrette. So pretty simple. The only thing I really gotta make is my balsamic vinaigrette, wash my greens and put that together and then make our steak and mushroom gravy. So let's start there. All right, so I just kind of have everything on the counter. Let me just show you. All right, so there's our beef. We've got salt and pepper. I've got some dried thyme that I'm gonna use to season as well as some garlic, or excuse me, these are um, dehydrated onion granules and garlic powder. So I'm gonna be using all of this to help season the beef and along with the gravy. I have some shiitake mushrooms here that are just rehydrating and softening back up in some water. And we're gonna use this within our sauce. I'll slice these up. These are shiitakes that we've grown over the past couple of years. And whenever we get a pretty big harvest, I just dehydrate them and then we have them all year long. This is a beef stock that I just canned about two weeks ago. So we're gonna use this to make our gravy. And then I've got some onion, garlic, and flour to make our gravy. We're gonna make a roux, very similar to last night, um, in order to get our gravy going. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut up my pieces of beef. Okay, so now that I've got just about all the meat cut away. I'm just going to cut, I have a couple pieces that are bite-sized pieces. Um, I'm, I want them a little bigger than bite-sized, so I'm just going to do it like this. Next time you buy meat, I want you to really look at the, the color, the marbling, right, the texture. 
Look at how gorgeous the color is, this deep, deep red. This is what you get when you buy meat that has been raised out on pasture. And honestly, I will never buy any other type of meat ever again. I would much rather eat vegetarian for the necessary time being than to eat a meat that was not ethically raised, responsibly raised, and raised on pasture. It's just such a difference with the quality. So just like last night, I added a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and stirring it around. It's going to look really dry. If there's enough oil still left in the pan, you might even get like a paste-like consistency. And that is what you want. And you slowly start adding your liquid. Bon appetit. Thanks for joining me during this comfort meal episode. I hope it had provided some inspiration for you to do something a little bit different, maybe when you're craving something just a little bit more comforting. Let me know if there's anything in particular you'd like to see or learn how to make or how to make just at home a little bit healthier. Always looking for new inspiration myself. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.